Good morning. My name is Sergey Gorokhin. I'm chief editor. I came for the conference with Generation 4. Uh, please raise your hand, those who came yesterday. Nearly one half. Uh, yesterday was nearly focused on Ukrainian reforms. We have discussed, had a discussion with representatives of quite many cool organizations trying, that are trying to push through the political field. Over the day, we shall have lectures of Pinzanek, Mr. Vanchuk, who will discuss once again the reforms of the free market in the territory of Ukraine. This morning, we would like to start with more practical, more interesting questions about the real trends our free generation is now facing and will be facing in the coming uh, decades. And the first speaker is Mikhail Chebanyan, the founder of Bitcoin agency UNO, organizer of the great event which takes place in Kiev annually of Bitcoin conference, and the activist who is uh, trying to show Ukraine what Bitcoins are about. And I hope that today he will describe in few words. Uh, it's a difficult uh, topic, those who are not familiar with Bitcoin. Let us welcome Mikhail. Good morning. Speak. I will not speak of Bitcoins. My purpose is to make you interested and tell you about the Bitcoin, not like uh, of the cryptocurrency or as the uh, Ministry of uh, Interior believes it's electronic money, not approved by the government, not approved by the central bank. We shall speak of Bitcoin as of ideology, as well as technology Bitcoin is uh, built on. But traditionally, my first question, what happens to the mic? Could, you, could I have another one? <coughs> it's getting interrupted all the way through. Just a second. Who uh, heard the word uh, Bitcoin before? Just heard. Who uh, never heard the word Bitcoin until today? Few people didn't. Who believes uh, they know what Bitcoins are? Few people. That's honest. Who had the search uh, at home? Any search? Did you have? Are you kidding? The number of searches is uh, larger than uh, the number of people who know what Bitcoins are. So uh, the government works better than I do. So uh, what Bitcoins are? At today's conference, uh, we shall be speaking about uh, more important things. Uh, Bitcoins are the ideology. This is an ideology of uh, free world. This is an ideology of uh, the free freedom of thoughts, and this is an ideology of uh, freedom of uh, choice and your actions. I would like to start with uh, the active part. Do we have young entrepreneurs in this room? Just one? You are uh, not so young entrepreneur. Uh, do you have smartphones? A smartphone. Excellent. So please uh, enter App Store or Play Market and download an application like this. Will you do that for me? Please do, both of you. If you also want, just a Bitcoin wallet in App Store or Play Market and download. That's for beginning. The topic of this report is why Bitcoin? 
It's, uh, it's very simple because uh, it's high time for that. We are another generation. We think different. Regretfully, the world and the state and the big uh, corporations cannot uh, change uh, that quickly. Our objective is to build a new world and uh, push as many people as possible. Now we shall demonstrate the basic things, how a Bitcoin economy works as money. We shall then speak of uh, economics. Uh, ideology is a basis of any state. There are two young entrepreneurs. One of them is not so young, as he says, the young entrepreneurs. Could you download? So what shall we do? Now the young entrepreneurs, if uh, we turn it into the uh, habitual language, open the bank account. Downloading the wallet is like opening bank account in the real world. What is necessary to open bank account in Bitcoin? First, willingness. Secondly, device. Thirdly, internet access. That's all you need. As soon as you download, so entrepreneurs uh, do it slowly, still pumping, already pumped. How much time passed uh, since uh, I said uh, do download and already downloaded? So three minutes. In three minutes, a uh, young entrepreneur opened a bank account. Can you please compare it with the existing banking system? In three minutes, uh, you can just be looking for the website to find out where, the, where is the nearest branch, because we'll have to walk there, take a passport, uh, wait in the queue, then ask them uh, p politely, please open the bank account, fill a number of uh, uh, forms. And after that, uh, maybe you will be allowed to open the bank account. Then you will want the, a plastic card, you will have to wait. Uh, some banks uh, give uh, the cards immediately. And it takes time anyway, compared to three minutes. The next thing, why do we need a bank account uh, to make money? to receive payments on it. In order to receive payments on the bank account, you need, uh, unless you receive directly on your uh, plastic card and will decide to work with uh, the whole world, you will need internet acquiring. Internet acquiring is such a thing which uh, makes it possible on your website site, uh, to receive payments from Visa MasterCard. In order to get it, you indeed uh, must go to the bank, not necessarily physically, and say, dear bank, please allow me as an entrepreneur, please, if you are not against that, to receive the money just for providing consultancy or selling things, uh, you must uh, ask them. And the bank will either allow or prohibit. The bank takes the decision, not you. Not you. Everything through bitcoins. You made intentional choice, you downloaded the wallet, and now you can receive payments. Now let me demonstrate all that. Could you please uh, walk up the stage? What is your name? This is Sergey, number one. I'm Mikhail, as well as Andrei. So we have two young entrepreneurs. What are you doing? Everything must be real, not... Uh, I, I sell uh, timber. I-tech. IT. Yeah, we are colleagues. Selling the woods, selling the timber. It's difficult to imagine how we shall uh, sell uh, logs via internet. However, I need your wallets. Uh, is it uh, technically possible to uh, show on the screen what is happening on the telephone? No. Then uh, you will trust me. So look. Just believe me. So the entrepreneur downloaded a Bitcoin wallet. For th this took you a minute and play market. What personal data did you disclose? No. You're an IT person, so it's a bad question. No personal data. Uh, of course, you have the IP number. 
uh, telephone has email address and other things. However, you did not disclose your personal data. What is your name? How old are you? The password details, uh, nothing like that. Where do you live? So we have bank account, number one, Bitcoin wallet. We turn into Bitcoin economics. And there is number two. Bitcoin is built on several principles. Every, first, everything is open. Second, everything is in, in the open source. What is open source? The open codes. Are, uh, if you want to repeat, you just copy and create, and people will thank you for that. Decentralized, it means there is no person or a company or a group of people who would control everything. Those are basic things. Now please look at the screen. As I said before, everything is open. So please have a look. Uh, this is uh, stats for one of the uh, one of the my wallets. One of my wallets. So it's open. Could you imagine that someone will show his banking details anywhere online? We're now online. You can enter and see the same information. So what we can see? First, the final balance, how much was received, how, much, how many transactions were held, what kind of transactions I did, when they took place, the particular time, this is how the address of Bitcoin wallet looks. This is a set of uh, uh, numbers and letters uh, starting from one. It's also duplicated on the top. We can see uh, whom did I send, how many, uh, how much I sent, which wallet did I send, and all of my transactions. Everything is open. Nobody hides anything. And now we show the experiment. So I open my telephone. And I want, first I want to buy a wood, timber. I hope uh, it was uh, uh, harvested uh, legally. You have certificates for it. I also open my wallet, a regular program. I want to uh, send a Bitcoin. For that, I need to scan the same QR code, or manually, I input that lengthy address. Uh, this is rather silly, because you can make mistake. it's better to scan the address, so the woods, okay. This is QR code, we scan it. Conventionally speaking, I would like uh, to, to buy uh, one piece uh, of wood worth of uh, four uh, cents, uh, micropayment. Now the uh, uh, screen is dark. Uh, I press the button send. So what do we see? Changing the uh, balance, uh, we can see that I have uh, sent this amount. We can check when it happened. We can also see on the, t on the phone that uh, he ho has already received uh, bitcoins, uh, magic. You could be in Papua New Guinea, I could stay here on the stage. It uh, doesn't matter where we are, because transaction goes uh, via internet, and it doesn't matter for the, for the net. Who you are, uh, what is your name? Thank you for the piece of wood. You are free now. What else can we uh, see from this transaction? We can see where did we send, to whom did we send, uh, what is the amount. Everything is open. Now, to make it uh, visible, to visualize that, uh, we shall repeat. Now we shall buy IT services. We shall buy a little bit of them, a little bit more of them. In the same way, I scan QR code. I could uh, do that manually. I could have received that QR code by electronic mail, WhatsApp, Viber, via, via regular wire, another program. 
you could uh, read that loud. Uh, everything I have to know about the person is uh, this line. No more information is needed. Neither banking card that uh, can be used to keep track uh, of who he is and where he is. No, nothing. I would like to buy a little bit more of services for 18 cents. I press the button, send, and you already receive. That's it. So th this is a real example. Thank you. So what did we demonstrate on this example? I am the customer, and he is a supplier. I didn't ask anyone, and he didn't ask anyone. We didn't have to go to the administration and ask whether I can sell woods or IT services. I didn't have to ask whether I can open, whether I can uh, buy wood chips. I didn't go to the bank, I didn't have to go to the bank asking whether I can make this transaction. Because every time when you're using such things, those things, the banking card. Every time you ask uh, uh, your, your bank, somebody else's bank, and the visa system, whether I can use my money. This is not your money. As soon as uh, you uh, take money to the bank, it is no longer yours. Every time you need a permit. The key thing of Bitcoin as ideology is that you uh, have to ask nobody. If you believe into the idea, you just take and implement it. If people believe in your idea, they can also support you from any point of the world. Everything you need is to open Bitcoin wallet, publicly say that this is my address. Please send the Bitcoins here. This is QR code. You can send Bitcoins right away. It's not a problem. And it works. Examples, the brightest example. In August of uh, last year, the group of developers declared that they uh, collect money for development of Bitcoin 2.0 protocol, uh, Ethereum. On their website, they have published information what they will do, describe the entire idea, why it is uh, needed, and so on. In 40 or 35 days, uh, over their site, uh, not asking anyone, not opening a single account, not registering any companies, they have uh, collected the equivalent of 18 million US dollars from the world. And for those 18 million dollars, that they have uh, collected, uh, created that Ethereum. Now it does exist. They have funded all developers. All the salaries were in Bitcoins. Nobody had to be asked about nothing. I think it's uh, cool. Because you, if you have to, uh, all the time, uh, Ask for things. It's no, no longer your choice. This is a choice of somebody else or another system. Here, the choice is made by yourselves, and the decision is taken by yourselves. The result uh, depends on yourselves, rather than on whether the bank opens the account on time or if anyone registered some kind of application. What else can we demonstrate? As Bitcoin is not the currency of any country, intentionally I say currency because in the EU, European Court of Justice admitted that Bitcoin is a currency. Transactions in Bitcoins are allowed and are not subject to VAT. It's all legal there. As soon as you cross Polish border, Bitcoin is legal and it's a currency. As soon as you return back to Ukraine, de jure, it does not exist. Of course, uh, un unless you are involved with the uh, interior ministry. Because in the opposite case, uh, they will have their own uh, version. I would not like to discuss that right now. I spoke of the currency. This is not uh, a currency of uh, any country. Bitcoins uh, have no uh, final beneficiary. Everybody who is using Bitcoins are beneficiaries. Uh, 
There is no central bank. There is no top management. There is no legal entity. Actually, there is no nothing except for Internet and the decentralized network. What uh, are the benefits? We have an opportunity to trust the system more. Because, as it is uh, demonstrated by practice, centralized systems have I vulnerability, they are subject to such unpleasant things uh, as corruption. We can also do a survey here. Who trusts the central bank? Nobody. This is an example of a centralized system. Okay, who trusts the Federal Reserve System, those who are responsible for dollars? Nobody. One person. One and a half people. This is an example. Because any central bank is an organization, is a board of directors, are people. Anyway, there is someone on top who takes a decision whether to make inflation, not to make inflation, to close banks, not to close banks. In that system, there are no such people, neither people nor organizations who can be closed. In this system, it doesn't matter what is your name, what you are doing, what is, what is your family name, uh, what is your social status, uh, what uh, what is your wealth, whether you are public official. It, it, it doesn't matter for the system because this is pure mathematics. Then compare it uh, with the existing world. Depending on the name you have, you will have a different treatment. You will have different terms for st starting business, uh, doing business, discounts uh, in the stores. Basically, this is also a key difference. This system is uh, uh, flat. On one side, there can be a name of Rothschild Rockefeller, on the other side, there can be uh, uh, Ivanov, and it doesn't matter for the system. By saying that, I mean that uh, the terms uh, of the, for the both will be just the same. Equality, equal opportunities, absolutely the same. In the banking system, it's really important uh, what name do you have, uh, what uh, uh, relatives do you have. Uh, now, uh, the questions that you might have after uh, you start uh, studying what bitcoins are and uh, why they are needed. As I said before, this is not a currency of any country. Then there is a question, uh, what is it supported by? The answer is simple, nothing. It is sub subordinated to two things. First is mathematics, another one time. No other constant in Bitcoin. You will say, this is probably a pyramid. Grivna or dollar, they are uh, actually uh, supported by real values. Uh, now the fiction begins. Uh, please uh, raise your hands. Uh, what, what do you think? Uh, behind Grivna, is there any foreign exchange or gold reserves of the central bank? Uh, you think no. Is dollar supported by, secured by gold? Nice people. It's nice talking to you. When I explain people what bitcoins are, finally we uh, say, that they don't understand what money is about. They don't really understand that uh, there is no money since 1970s. They don't understand what is currency. They still believe that Grivna is secured by land, Grivna is secured by industry of Ukraine, Grivna is secured by gold in the storages of central bank, some other interesting versions. Dollar is secured by U.S. Army. I probably agree uh, with that. Is it, is, this is guaranteed. If you do something against uh, America, they'll bring democracy to your country, like they did with Afghanistan. It's the same way. It's uh, not secured by anything. However, in case uh, with dollar, grivna, or any other currency, there is central bank, uh, there are people who can influence all that. In case with essential standard currency, the model is inflation. They keep printing dollars, grivna, 
uh, whatever. It's mathematics. You can cannot add bitcoins. There is limited number of bitcoins. There cannot be uh, more. Uh, cannot be less. Uh, this is all in the formula. It is only subject to a single rule of mathematics. It comes uh, from it that uh, we have free market, the, which is only controlled by its participants, which does not have a regulator, and accordingly, uh, uh, pricing to fiat currency uh, is uh, regulated by supply and demand, economic forces. Uh, actually, there is uh, the market of Bitcoin. Uh, currently, one Bitcoin is $357. How the pricing takes place? This is an example of one of the uh, uh, exchanges. I cannot show this. That's why. So pricing takes place on exchanges. There are sites when there is uh, supply and demand uh, come together. As soon as uh, the price is defined, uh, we have the spot price, uh, similar to selling the stocks, trading in stocks. This market is, however, uh, unregulated. There are no SEC, no Securities and Exchange Commission, which oversees over the appropriateness of trade on the stock market. There is nobody here, just your willingness, your capital, and you influence the market. On one hand, it's good. On the other hand, it's bad. However, we know that the central bank will not come with the intervention. And it might, however. Why not? Uh, at some point in the future, when it will recognize bitcoins. What else I wanted to say? Most probably the key thing, once again, is that this system makes it possible for you to take decisions. Once again, because nowadays uh, every step of ours, this way or another way, is controlled or uh, is being managed. We say about banks, we say about internet, we say about uh, devices which are in our pockets, and so on. Here, the decision is taken by yourselves. Therefore, I say Bitcoin is an ideology. This is an ideology of free people. Another question, by the way, who watched uh, the uh, movies, uh, Zeitgeist, from uh, about conspiracy, Golden Billion? One person. No more riots, uh, uh, rioters, uh, anarchists, activists. Also, uh, activists, uh, also conspiracy, uh, is uh, focused on some people who control everything, and they doing. It's through finance. Uh, the hackers, uh, uh, anarchists who are against that, uh, they can see a future in it because there is no central bank, uh, no families to control everything, only the real market and willingness of its participants. This is probably all because yesterday uh, it was fun and today is early morning. Uh, maybe we can turn to questions uh, immediately. Good morning, my name is Sol. I have, have a simple question. For example, I want to get these bitcoins to start using them. Where can I get them? The initial amount, how do I get it? The answer is simple. It's the same currency as the others, just more sophisticated. 
And so in order to answer the question where to get Bitcoin, answer the question where to get US dollars. You're in Grivna area. Where, where do you get dollars? In the exchange office. Other options? To steal it. A good option. Next one. To print it. Here it doesn't work. You can print dollars here, you cannot do it. Any other options with the dollars? To earn it. It's all the same. Nothing is different. You can uh, earn it, you can buy it, you can exchange it. No microphone. I didn't use the word mining, it's the mission and the process of verification of all transactions, but you cannot, in Bitcoin, you cannot endlessly print it based on your decision. There is mathematical formula, there is algorithm in which the mission is made. The issue is made now. Every 10 minutes, 25 bitcoins are issued. Not more, not, not less. Uh, regardless of what you do, you will not uh, print more. In case of dollar, you can uh, launch your printing machine and never stop it until your paper you run out of paper. Here, everything is limited. So to answer your question, it's all the same as with any other currency. Any other questions? My name is Roman. I have a question. Okay, Bitcoin. Bitcoins are not regulated by anything, but the information is stored somewhere on all transactions. Then there are some servers, anyway, some international servers, and by and large, you can just hack them, you can destroy them, and you can in essence, uh, destroy all the currency. Is it possible, theoretically? Thank you. It's a very good question. As I said, the system is decentralized. In the case of Grivna, where Grivna is stored? Do you know where Grivna is stored? Any options, please? Participate. Great, great answer. You enter your online banking and you can see that you have some balance sheet. So the balance sheet is not in your bank, it's in National Bank. In the Central Bank of Ukraine there is a huge server which stores data on how many grivna each bank has on their balance sheet. It's not your grievance. As soon as you bring it to the bank, I don't need to explain it here in this audience. In case of bitcoins, uh, there is no central bank. We have decentralized network. Who knows how torrents operate? Whoever downloaded free pirated movies? It's freedom. Don't be shy. I'm not a uh, minister of interior. Everyone has done it. So in torrents, there is no central server. You download it and then you give it out to everyone else. And the same uh, as what everyone does. With bitcoins, we have similar situations. So these ports around the world are computers at which there is fully fledged register on all transactions in Bitcoin network. We can observe that now we have 5,254 nodes that are active. These are computers, actually. So your question, you can come and close it, but even if you close 5,250 three computers. Can you imagine this work that you need to do in order to close all of this and to find one in Canberra and Australia who still has it? Even if you close all but one, the network will continue to live. As soon as someone else launches it on his computer, there will be two nodes and so on. So it's quite hard to destroy this network. The only way how to switch off bitcoins to die so that bitcoin dies. There are two ways, actually. First, once and for all, to switch off internet to everyone else and never turn it on again. But there is the bypass that was created for that already. It's not necessarily to launch information through internet. You can do it through radio signals, or through Morse code, and so on. But as soon as you switch off the internet to everyone, there will be financial collapse, collapse of financial system, and collapse of all the globe. We will not be selling timber anymore.
So it's not the right way to take. Second risk, the basis of cryptography to break the encoding code. The encoding that is used, the encryption that is used, is the same the one that is used by American CIA, by Russian uh, security service, by Ukrainian security service, as SHA-256 algorithm. It's possible to break this algorithm, but you need quantum computer for that. As soon as we have quantum computers, just invite me. I'll be your guest. We'll not do in Bitcoin anymore. We'll have cooler stuff to do. So it will be quite difficult to destroy Bitcoins. We can see all the nodes. We can see Ukraine. It's in top 10 periodically. But as soon as, as our police is also developing, now we're on position 12. Now we can see IPs of those who launched it. So they are saying where they have all this. And this is the Ukrainian list. Next question. Next question. Please. Finally, we're awake. Me too. Mic doesn't work. My name is Igor. I have a question on strength of these two wallets that we created, the timber seller and IT guy. If we create these wallets and you don't use it, just like many of us opens their pools box and something changed and they don't use it. Just like you open emails and you don't use it. And this physical, this wallets, Bitcoin wallets, if you don't use them, how long do they exist? And second, how much do you need to be dedicated into internet things like in case of Forex if you don't do it right you just lose your money here we don't have the agent I promised you something can I get my mic back as uh, so we don't have agents, no one does ever promises you anything, no one guarantees you anything. You make all the decisions and all the con consequences depend on you. If you don't pull it in the right place, this is it. Bitcoin transaction is impossible to stop. Bitcoin transaction is impossible to reverse. We know the addresses of your wallets, but it's impossible to block them a priori. To create any obstacles to the guys, to anyone else, to use bitcoins, it's impossible. We can either switch off the internet, we discussed it, but you have to switch off internet to everyone for that. Because you can be located in any place and to get the access to Bitcoin wallets. Second way is to catch them, to torture them. And then under torture they will give the access to his wallets and this is how you get the access to his wallets. But to catch everyone will be quite problematic. And accordingly, hardly it is possible to do this. As regards security, there is no central server, there is no guarantee if you lose your smartphone in this case, you lose the access to Bitcoin wallets unless you do a backup. If you send it to the wrong place, then the transaction is final. This is both advantage and disadvantage. You may make a mistake and you cannot bring it back. On the other hand, it's a huge advantage for the seller because it's the protection of the seller. Now, every time you pay it with your credit cards, in all cases, there is an opportunity to argue against the transaction to return the money and the seller will lose this money. In case of Bitcoin, as soon as you get it, you get it. In case of Bitcoin, the money, not the money, the value. Bitcoin is the value. He gets it instantaneously. In the banking system, they write on your balance sheet that you will get it in the future. In the best case, it will be done next day. Uh, here it happens instantaneously. It is not simple at this point, but everything is developing very quickly. It is simplified very quickly, and I think that you will not even know that this is Bitcoin. You will just use it, and it will have some simple interface. 
no microphone. You can create as many wallets as you want. You can even have your wallet on your smartphone, on your telephone, in the web. You can have it on your, your service. And you can even have your wallets in your head. Just look, what is Bitcoin? It's very similar to electronic cash. Bitcoin doesn't exist. Physically, it doesn't exist. We tell this to the police, not to, so that they don't come and search for it anymore. It doesn't exist physically. It's just the records in the decentralized book. Accounting book. It's just a balance sheet. It's like uh, electronic cash. It doesn't exist. It's just a balance sheet in the Federal Reserve System, for example. In our case, there is no FRS. There is the map in which all transactions are stored. And here is Bitcoin. You can get your access there, but you need to know your private key. And you can answer from any devices that are convenient for you. And do I answer a question? Oh, there is a question there. Hello? I have two questions. As the means for short-term transactions, this is ideal uh, as exchange method. Can it be used as uh, the savings method? Can we use it for savings? Every day some bitcoins are issued and the value of savings is lost. It's like the issue that happens anyway, issue of this bitcoins. As the method of savings is one of the definition of money and currency. I would not say that bitcoins have goods property of saving the value. I would like to show you the graph. Uh, do the developers work in that? On saving the value, it depends exclusively on us. There is volatility. Here we go, we can see it. Here is the graph. Now this graph shows how the price changes. It's uh, 351 US dollars, and this is the level. It fluctuates uh, for the last 24 hours. If we look at this in the context of six years, then the price was zero, and it's jumped to 30, then it stabilized and it fell, and then it uh, went up again. Then the peak was 260, then it fell again. I'm talking about US dollars per one Bitcoin. Then it fell to 120, then there was the bubble made by Chinese to 1,000. $100 per Bitcoin, then it fell again, then it uh, went up again, then it went down again, and now we're stabilized at 351 Is it a good savings? You buy it at 1100 now it's 351 the answer is no. So you should treat it as high risk, high gain investment if you want to invest. But you started it's a good question that this is an ideal tool for making payments. Why? Let's compare it to regular payments. The Chinese wants to buy your timber. For that you need to send them an invoice if you use traditional methods. Just a second, I'll go back to you. We use traditional methods. You send invoice to a Chinese and he goes to his bank. Or he uses internet banking and he sends money to you by Swift. How much time does it take to fill in all these online forms? Second, to send this request to the bank. The bank, please uh, pay this money from my account. This will take some time. And then SWIFT. It may be urgent, 24 hours, so usually it's, it's, it takes three days. Compare it to how much time it needs, uh, three minutes to install it and 10 seconds to send it. Online economy. Now SWIFT is slower than bringing cash and uh, delivering to China. So it's good as a uh, means of payments. You buy it, you sell it, and you forget about this. Second question is philosophical and political. We all realize that this is the alternative to central banks, which print unlimited amounts of money, and they actually manipulate the financial systems. So, you can just expect the governments to accept you gladly. 
Why do you go to Central Bank of Ukraine and why do you want to legalize it? What's the point? I don't think that Bitcoin will replace any national currency. I don't think so. Bitcoin can be a complementary currency. Even more probable that Bitcoin will be a complementary payment system. I believe this. As regards why going to central bank and so on, let's just discuss the points. Now we're sitting here, it's a bad word, we're located here in one of the five cryptocurrency capitals of the world. It's the first point. In Ukraine, there is the highest Bitcoin, the biggest Bitcoin community in the Eastern Europe. In Ukraine, the people who are originally from Ukraine control about 75 percent of the biggest, the coolest Bitcoin startups. In some sectors of economy, of Bitcoin, so to say, you have position number one. Tell me, please, where else Ukraine can boost, except for corruption, can boost about the stop ratings? Nowhere else. Sunflower oil, what else? Honey, nuts, what else? I don't understand you more to uh, spend a lot of time meeting officials, bureaucrats to raise your rating. This rating does not depend on the official, and this is a good thing. If they knew about Bitcoin earlier, they would inhibit more, they would create more obstacles. Why I'm doing that? First, I believe in the idea, and second, Ukraine is de facto one of the biggest, it's probably top five in terms of markets. And I don't see why Ukrainians in this top 20, they're all registered in the UK or America or in offshores. Why me as an entrepreneur should hide behind Brits being here to do this, to develop this business? I don't want this. Why do I need additional offshores? I don't want this so they come to me and uh, make searches in my premises. I'm doing that so that I can develop my business in this country and not be afraid for that. And other people can develop it as well. If we don't do it, then we take the way of Russia, where officials will make decisions and frighten us that will, they will put us to prison. I'm doing this uh, so that they don't ban us, and this is the potential of the country. It's the business, uh, this is huge market which is growing, and the most important is we have people who can put in place projects in this ecosystem, this is experts with uh, FX gains, FX revenues. Is there a possibility of interest, a loan interest in Bitcoin? And the answer is no. There is no fraction of reserve banking, there is no interest on refinancing, no refinancing rates, there is nothing like that here. How can we buy products uh, in the food store in Europe? It's the same, you don't need to go to Europe. You can do it in Kiev, you can go to the food store. Unfortunately, it's, it's only one at this point, because it's a brave person there. You can go to the store, you can buy your products, you can buy, buy your groceries, and you can choose how you can pay. You can pay in cash with your card or with Bitcoin. In case of Bitcoin, the uh, shop assistant uh, at the cash register shows you the amount which is automatically calculated in Bitcoin, and see the QR code that is used to pay it. I used to buy milk like that. How many stores in Europe that can sell you in Bitcoins? From officially registered in the big payments providers for Bitcoin, the statistics is around 100,000 
of merchants globally, but about three times more, I believe, the ones like selling timber here, because everything you need to start accepting Bitcoin, so you don't need to register anything, you just download the wallet and you accept the payments. How many people are like that globally connected to the internet? About uh, one and a half to two billion, I believe. Thank you. Next question. No microphone. Are you talking about taxes now? Let's discuss it later because we go into taxes and these uh, issues are too complicated. Hello, now in Europe everyone is going crazy and panicking that terrorism is sponsored by bitcoins and now they will toughen the control over bitcoins and even in Europe all they created the position, the specialists on blockchains, how will it influence the business that operates bitcoins? You understand that the war is mostly in media than in the real space. I don't need to tell this in this audience just for your understanding. If we look at all existing bitcoins, if we multiply them by $351, we'll get the amount of about 4.2 billion US dollars. All bitcoins globally cost $4.2 billion. This is just the drop in the sea, in the ocean, just even for the big Ukrainian bank, this is just the drop in the ocean. So to say that through bitcoins they've financed terrorism, especially in the cases of, like in Paris, no. The terrorism in terms of scratching someone's car, maybe yes, if you classify this as terrorism. The same is about other things like drugs, weapons, and so on. Bitcoins have not enough volume for this transaction. If you want to fight terrorism, you need to ban dollar, because everything goes through dollar. If you want to ban drugs in Ukraine, they're all going through the same bank. They have 90% of sales of drugs. It's not the question to the system. It's a question to the people. So I would not be concerned about that. Hello. A question. You mentioned one store that accepts uh, bitcoins in Kyiv. It is located at Mechanizatorov Street. It's a Mrudny Echo shop. We'll have more of those. Your case is very interesting, your recent case. How safe is it? to accept bitcoins uh, for the regular business, for physical business, uh, brick and mortar, not internet business. And the second question, the basis of bitcoins uh, are different ideals, crypto anarchy and so on. What's your position on this? Aren't you concerned that bitcoin is moving to the consent for the governments? First question, how legal is all this? Second, the anarchy and uh, the collusion with the government about legality. Bitcoin in Ukraine is not banned, it's not forbidden. You need to analyze the recent articles and announcements of the National Bank. Second, Bitcoin doesn't exist in any national document officially, it just doesn't exist. So it is not forbidden, and what is not forbidden is allowed, but here we have the question why we legalize all this, because now the only opportunity for you to accept bitcoins in terms of paying taxes, because as El Capone you can be charged for not paying taxes. If you are a sole trader, or the first, the second, or the third category, they have flat tax system, it's all clear. Or you act as the physical person, then it's not business, it's one-time transactions. So Ekolovka is second group of sole traders. He pays a 600 grivenness of taxes, flat tax rate, and do they just give out milk for the smile, or for bitcoins, it's all allowed, it's up to him. We do standardization in Ukraine so that legal entities can officially use this tool so that it's clear how to pay VAT, how to pay duties and taxes, because we have to, to pay taxes anyway. About the collusion with the state, it's not the first phenomenon when something is anarch anarchic and then it goes regular. Sooner or later we'll have the balance in the golden middle. We cannot have 100% of 
vertical system and 100% of horizontal system will be in the balance somewhere. The balance will be in the golden middle. So what you see is cooperation with the state. This is the fight. Uh, are we at 66 or 33 in terms of decentralization or centralization? So the future of the system will be semi-decentralization. I don't believe that it will be 100%, although we would like to have that, but it will be semi-decentralized. And two quick questions. I'm interested in applied side of this. How can we cash in our money that we make? It's a bad word to cash it in. You don't need to use this word. How do I withdraw money from my wallet, which I earned? And how do I take my cash in Grivna? And how do I pay it to my wallet? It's just exchange it, just like you have FX revenue in US dollars and you exchange it for grievances. Now you exchange it at Interbank. In case of Bitcoin, you exchange it at stock exchange, at exchange offices, if I, it's someone who wants to do the reverse uh, transaction. The paradox of Queen, although we're Bitcoin states, we don't have exchange at this point. Thanks God, soon we'll have one. It's a paradox between because in Europe, in Asia, they have a huge number of exchanges, and you can officially register bitcoins and uh, dollars and euros are exiting. The taxes are paid, no problem. In Ukraine, unfortunately, it was not there, but soon we'll have it. So we'll have conversion. We'll have exchange. And what was the second question? In the applied sense, just like exchange office, you go there, you send uh, bitcoins, and you get grievances to your card. So far, it's not available. Next question. The last question was uh, removed. Uh, let's thank Mikhail. We can talk to him in the lobby later.